This is the audio lecture for Chapter 2, Community Care, the Family and Culture. The family and its cultural context play an important role in defining the work of maternity nurses. Despite modern stresses and strains, the family forms a social network that acts as a potent support system for its members. Family care-seeking behavior and relationships with providers are all influenced by culturally related health beliefs and values. Ultimately, all of these factors have the power to affect maternal and child health outcomes. The current emphasis in working with families is on wellness and empowerment for families to achieve control over their lives. It is essential that nurses become culturally competent in order to provide the most appropriate care possible. The family has traditionally been viewed as the primary unit of socialization, the basic structural unit within a community. The family plays a pivotal role in health care, representing the primary target of health care delivery for maternal and newborn nurses. As one of society's most important institutions, the family represents a primary social group that influences and is influenced by other people and institutions. Family-centered care is the target of health delivery for maternal and newborn nurses. Family Organization and Structure the nuclear family has long represented the traditional American family in which male and female partners and their children live as an independent unit sharing roles, responsibilities, and economic resources. Multi-generational families consisting of grandparents, children, and grandchildren are becoming increasingly common. In 2010, they made up 4.4% of all households. No parent families are those in which children live independently in foster or kinship care such as living with a grandparent. An estimated 5.4 million children in the United States live with grandparents. Married parent families, either biologic or adoptive parents, make up 48.4 percent of American families. Married blended families, those formed as a result of divorce and remarriage, consist of unrelated family members such as step-parents, step-children, and step-siblings who join to create a new household. Single-parent families comprise an unmarried biologic or adoptive parent who may or may not be living with other adults. Cohabitating parent families are those in which children live with two unmarried biologic parents or two adoptive parents. Homosexual families may live together with or without children. Children in lesbian and gay families may be the offspring of previous heterosexual unions conceived by one member of a lesbian couple through therapeutic insemination or adopted. This slide is an example of a nuclear family. Here you have the father, the mother, the two brothers, the sister, and of course this beautiful creature over here, the oldest daughter. What a beautiful nuclear family. This is an, an image of an extended family. Family dynamics. Social roles are learned in pairs. For example, mother, father, parent, child, brother, or sister. The family uses its resources to provide a safe, intimate environment for development of family members. It provides for nurturing of the newborn and gradual socialization of the growing child. And the parent-child relationships influence self-worth and ability to form later relationships. The family provides the growing child with identity that possesses both a past and a sense of the future. Cultural values and rituals are passed from one generation to the next through the family. Power reflects the family's concepts of male or female, dominance and cultural practices. 
social customs, and community norms. Family nursing. Family plays a pivotal role in health care, representing the primary target of health care delivery for maternal and newborn nurses. It is crucial that nurses assist families as they incorporate new additions into their family. When treating the woman and family with respect and dignity, health care providers listen to and honor perspectives and choices of the woman and family. They share information with families in ways that are positive, useful, timely, complete, and accurate. The family is supported in participating in the care and decision making at the level of their choice. Theoretic Approaches to Understanding Families a family theory can be used to describe families and how the family unit responds to events both within and outside the family. Each family theory makes certain assumptions about the family and has inherent strengths and limitations. Most nurses use a combination of theories in their work with families. In your textbook, Table 2-1 gives a brief synopsis of each of the theories listed on the slide. The Calgary Family Assessment Model In this model, there are three major categories of the Calgary Family Assessment Model. It includes the structural, developmental, and functional. The structural assessment determines the members of the family, relationships among family members, and context of family. Genograms and echo maps are useful in outlining the internal and external structures of a family. Sample questions to ask through in this part of the assessment is, who are the members of your family? Has anyone moved in or out lately? And are there any family members who don't live with you? The developmental assessment describes the life cycle, that is, the typical trajectory most families experience. Sample questions through in this assessment is, when you think back, what do you most enjoy about your life? What do you regret about your life? Have you made plans for your care as your health declines? The functional assessment evaluates the way in which individuals behave in relation to each other in instrumental and expressive aspects. Sample questions in the functional assessment. Which one of the family is responsible for making sure grandma takes her medicine? Whose turn is it to fix dinner for grandma? How can we get Martin to help with grandma's care? This is a branching diagram of the Calgary Family Assessment Model. A family genogram provides valuable information about a family and can be placed in the nursing care plan for easy access by care providers. The family tree format depicts relationships of family members over at least three generations. An eco map is a graphic portrayal of social relationships of the woman and family. May also help the nurse understand the social environment of the family and identify, identify support systems available to them. This is an image of a family tree depicting relationships of family members over at least three generations. This slide shows an example of an ecomap. The family in a cultural context. Culture of an individual is influenced by religion, environment, and historic events and plays a powerful role in the individual's behavior and patterns of human interaction. Culture has also been shown to have a direct effect on health behaviors. Values, attitudes, and beliefs that are culturally acquired may influence perceptions of illness as well as health care seeking behavior and response to treatment. Some words that you should already be familiar with uh, acculturation. It refers to the changes that occur within one group or among several, several groups when people from different cultures come into contact with one another.
people may retain some of their own culture while adopting some cultural practices of the dominant society. Assimilation occurs when a cultural group loses its cultural identity and becomes part of the dominant culture. Assimilation is the process by which groups melt into the mainstream, and you may have heard as the United States of America being a melting pot. Ethnocentrism is the view that one's own way of doing things is best. Cultural relativism is the opposite of ethnocentrism. It refers to learning about and applying the standards of another's culture to activities within that culture. We must remember culture is not static. It is an ongoing process that influences a woman throughout her entire life from birth to death. Nurses working with childbearing families care for families from many different cultures and ethnic groups. To provide culturally competent care, the nurse must assess the beliefs and practices of patients. When working with childbearing families, a nurse considers all aspects of culture, including communication, space, time orientation, and family roles. You can read about these different practices in your textbook. Family roles involve the expectations and behaviors associated with the member's position in the larger family system. Example, mother, father, or grandparent. Social class and cultural norms also affect these roles with distinct expectation for men and women clearly determined by social norms. Developing cultural competence. Cultural competence has many names and definitions all of which have subtle shades of difference, but which are essentially the same. Multiculturalism, cultural sensitivity, and intercultural effectiveness. Cultural competence involves acknowledging, respecting, and appreciating ethnic, cultural, and linguistic diversity. Culturally competent professionals act in ways that meet the needs of the patient and are respectful of ways and traditions that may be very different from their own. Table 2-2 in your textbook lists traditional cultural beliefs and practices of childbearing and parenting by ethnicity. I highly suggest you take a look at this uh, table. This is an image of physician, nurses, and interpreters in a medical mission in Honduras. Community Health Promotion In community-based health promotion, three levels of prevention of disease exist. Primary prevention involves promoting healthy lifestyles through immunizations, encouraging exercise, and healthy nutrition. Secondary prevention involves targeting populations at risk for certain diseases. For example, women are encouraged to have mammograms. Men are encouraged to have prostate screening. Tertiary prevention focuses on rehabilitation of an individual to health as optimal as is possible in the presence of a disease or injury. For example, a person who has experienced a stroke has an optimal expectation of being able to function at his or her fullest potential. Functioning within the social, cultural, environmental, and economic context of the community, the family becomes an integral component of community health promotion efforts. For childbearing families, Health promotion is focused primarily on early intervention through prenatal care and prevention of complications during the perinatal period. Often, this early exposure to health information sets the stage for a successful birth and positive outcomes for mother and baby. The nurse's role in this process is focused on collaboration with the family, identifying risk factors, and providing health information to facilitate positive health behaviors. Assessing the community. A community assessment is a tool that is used to assess the health and well-being of a community. In a community health assessment, data are collected, 
analyze and use to educate and mobilize communities, develop priorities, garner resources, and plan actions to improve public health. Health departments are a valuable resource for annual reports of births and deaths. Local health departments also compile extensive statistics about the birth complications, causes of death, and leading causes of morbidity and mortality for each age group. Local and state health data are compiled and reported through the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, to the National Center for Health Statistics. The U.S. Census provides data on population size, age ranges, sex, racial and ethnic distribution, socioeconomic status, educational level, employment, and housing characteristics. Other sources of useful information are hospitals and voluntary health agencies. The March of Dimes Foundation, for example, has supported perinatal needs assessments in many communities across the United States. Professional associations and publications are rich and readily accessible sources for information for all nurses. Professional associations publish standards and position papers that are useful for the nurse providing care to the maternal child client. Vulnerable populations in the community. Vulnerability in terms of health status and health outcomes may take many forms, including sociocultural, economic, and environmental risk factors that contribute to disparities in health. Health disparities are conditions that disproportionately affect certain racial, ethnic, or other groups. African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, Pacific Islanders, and Asian Americans are all considered vulnerable populations because they are more likely to have poor health and die prematurely. Racial and ethnic minorities. In addition to social, economic, and cultural barriers to optimal health, women who are in racial and ethnic minorities experience a disproportionate burden of disease, disability, and premature death. The adolescent population in the United States is generally considered healthy. However, adolescents participate in riskier behaviors and their health is often compromised as a result. Although women have a longer life expectancy than men, they are more likely to have chronic illness, less likely to use preventative services, and ultimately spend more on health care. Incarcerated women. The lifestyle choices of this group, including risky sexual relationships, illicit drug use, and smoking, place them at high risk for STIs, HIV, and AIDS, other chronic and communicable diseases, and complicated pregnancies. The immigrant and refugees. Both populations are often challenged with not being able to easily access health care because they are not U.S. citizens. These women often do not seek medical care for fear of deportation. Access to care is further limited by health care policies that restrict Medicaid eligibility for these groups. Homeless women. Health issues among the homeless are numerous and result primarily from a lack of preventative care and a lack of resources in general. Health problems in this population include chronic illness, infectious diseases, asthma, circulatory problems, diabetes, substance abuse, and mental illness. Home, home care in the community. Modern home care nursing has its foundation in public health nursing, which provided comprehensive care to sick and well patients in their own homes. In the current health care system, Home care is an important component of health care delivery along the perinatal continuum of care. The growing demand for home care is based on several factors. Interest in family birthing alternatives, shortened hospital stays, new technologies that facilitate home-based assessments and treatments, reimbursement by third-party payers, 
As health care costs continue to rise and millions of American families lack health insurance, there is greater demand for innovative, cost-effective methods of health care delivery in the community. This image represents the perinatal continuum of care. As maternity care continues to consist of frequent and brief contacts with health care providers throughout the prenatal and postpartum periods, services that link maternity patients throughout the perinatal continuum of care have assumed increasing importance. These services include critical pathways, telephonic nursing assessments, discharge planning, specialized education programs, parent support groups, home visiting programs, nurse advice lines, and perinatal home care. The Association of Women's Health Obstetric and Neonatal Nurses defines home care as the provision of technical, psychologic, and other therapeutic support in the woman's home rather than in an institution. The scope of nursing care delivered in the home is necessarily limited to practices deemed safe and appropriate to be carried out in an environment that is physically separated from a healthcare institution and its resources. Selections and referrals for home care is based on the status of the mother and infant. Care management. The first home visit. The nurse uses the medical diagnosis and the location of the case on the perinatal continuum as a starting point to organize the woman's care. The nurse reviews agency policies and procedures, professional literature about diagnosis and community resources as part of the pre-visit preparation work. The primary goals of the assessment phase are to develop a trusting relationship and collect data by various methods to obtain a comprehensive patient profile. Nursing considerations to consider uh, when doing home visits. Accurate documentation is a must. Uh, you must educate the patient on the use of the medical equipment. Uh, and you must also communicate effectively to all members of the healthcare team. This image is of a home care nurse visiting a woman uh, who's at home on bed rest in preterm labor. For nurses who are participating in home care visits, it's very important to follow certain safety issues and guidelines. They want to always be aware of self and environment. Definitely do an environmental assessment of the home. Employ good listening and observation skills. Be aware of aggressive behaviors either by the patient or other family members or the significant other or spouse. For safety reason, visiting in pairs, maybe one nurse and a home health aide or two nurses just for safety reasons. And the nurse who is doing home visits should always have access to a cell phone at all times in case of an emergency. Infection control practices that we use in the inpatient setting should also be used in the home care setting. So the nurse must follow the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Uh, you still have to have strict hand washing techniques. Uh, if your patient is on any type of isolation precautions or you're going to do a procedure that might involve splashing a body bodily fluids, you definitely want to uh, use your PPE. And then you need the proper equipment necessary to prevent the spread of disease. So if you need to take your, your Sani wipes or uh, any other uh, items to bag up equipment, make sure if you're the home care nurse that you have all your resources with you. Question. When the service of an interpreter is used, it is important for the nurse to A. Use any family member who can interpret. 
B, use an interpreter who is certified. C, speak only to the interpreter. Or D, use an interpreter only in an emergency. The correct answer is B. Option A is incorrect. Although many healthcare personnel adopt this approach in an emergency, asking some family members to interpret may not be appropriate. Furthermore, most states require that certified interpreters be used when possible. B, which is the correct option, the rationale is a certified interpreter who has specific health-related skills and experience can help bridge the language and cultural barriers between the client and healthcare provider. Option C is incorrect. When using an interpreter, the nurse should direct questions to the client. The interpreter is merely a means by which the nurse communicates with the client. Option D is incorrect also. Every attempt should be made to contact an interpreter whenever one is needed. Through an emergency, healthcare workers often rely on information interpreted by family members. This information may be private and should be protected under rules established by the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA. Furthermore, family members may skew information or may not be able to interpret the exact information the nurse is trying to obtain. This ends the audio lecture for Chapter 2, Community Care, the Family, and Culture. Thank you.